Good day my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I'd like to share with all of you a commentary regarding the messages of Father Michel Rodrigue, concerning the Antichrist and how his messages are actually related to the messages and prophecies prophesied by the great saints of the Catholic Church. Therefore, please share this video with others and do listen to this commentary until the very end. Before we proceed with the commentary and the messages, let us start by reciting this short prayer asking our Heavenly Father for discernment and guidance, that the Holy Spirit may show us the truth and guide us when listening to this message. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the King of kings, and our all-powerful God. There is nothing which you could not do. We implore you to give us an experience of your heart, draw us deep into your very being, into the core of your love for us and of this world, give us a glimpse of others the way you see others, loving them, forgiving them and delighting in the way they give glory to you, through their very existence. Help us to discern out of that open place of deep affection, so that we too might be a useful vessel of your love in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, who died in 386 AD, predicted of the rise of the Antichrist, a topic addressed in greater depth by Canadian mystic Father Michel Rodrigue, who, in a retreat before an American audience in 2019, had much to tell to the world concerning the coming catastrophe. Saint Cyril said as follows, Antichrist will exceed in malice, perversity, lust, wickedness, impiety, and heartless cruelty and barbarity of all men that have ever disgraced human nature. He shall, through his great power, deceit, and succeed in decoying or forcing to his worship, two-thirds of mankind, the remaining third part of men will most steadfastly continue, true to the faith and worship of Jesus Christ. In his satanic rage and fury, Antichrist will persecute these brave and devoted Christians during three years and a half, and torture them with such an extremity of barbarity, with all the old and new invented instruments of pain, as to exceed all past persecutors of the Church combined. The three years and a half of persecution cited by Saint Cyril was also what Father Michel had allotted as the period of the reign of the Antichrist. Both were referring to a concrete person to rise as the ultimate Antichrist, after a series of mini Antichrists through mankind's history. Many prominent Catholics throughout the world trust Father Michel, who recently declared that, Saint Joseph will remove his protection against the development of the Antichrist this decade. During a retreat in the United States in 2019, I am revealing the first half of Father Michel's prophecies, the Father told me that the 21st century is his century. After the warning, no one left on earth will be able to say that God does not exist. When the warning comes, everyone will recognize Christ, and they will also recognize his body, and the body of Christ is the Catholic Church. They will know that, they have to come back him in the way that you will show them. Priests will also be there to welcome them. We will not be there to judge them. At that point, everyone who enters the church will want to serve the Lord. Everyone can come back to the church together for this time that was chosen by the Father himself. We will be there to serve the Lord. After the illumination of conscience, humanity will be given an unprecedented gift, a period of repentance lasting about six and a half weeks during which the devil will be unable to act. This means that, all humans will have total free will to choose whether to support or oppose the Lord. The devil will not be able to bind our will and fight us. 
The first two and a half weeks will be crucial, since the devil will not return at that time, but our habits will, and people will be more difficult to convert. And everyone who have gotten the desire for him, the feeling that they need his salvation, will have their guardian angel sign their forehead with a luminous cross. But I want you to know that, every faithful person and every servant of the Lord has already been marked. I was in Rochester, New York, where we had a prayer group of 28 members. We were in the kitchen, and as I lifted my eyes, I noticed that everyone was marked with a cross. I was astounded. One of the men present wore a cross with three branches, which symbolized that when the time comes, he will be a general in the Lord's army. He's been preparing for it. Every country has one general. That I am aware of. They were selected by the Lord. It's incredible. God has not given us three ways to travel, only two. There is no gray area in between the path of evil and the path of the Lord. Those who will say, I don't know. I cannot make a decision, will not be able to remain indifferent. As God says in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 16, So, because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. People will have to make a decisive choice, and you will understand why, because after that, they will be left with the consequences of their decision. The time of mercy will end, and the time of justice will begin. Jesus said this to St. Faustina Kowalska, write this. Before I come as the just judge. As the king of mercy, I am the first to arrive. A sign of this kind will be delivered to those in heaven before the day of justice arrives. All light in the skies will be gone, and the earth will be completely dark. Then the symbol of the cross will appear in the sky, and immense light will emanate from the apertures, where the hands and feet were fastened, lighting up the earth for a while. This will happen just before the last day. There will be a miraculous sign given to the world sometime after the warning. It will be in Garabandal, Spain, at the Pines where she first appeared there. The same time, it will be seen in Medjugorje, which has been promised also. The sign will be able to be seen and projected on the television. This will occur at the beginning of the tribulation. For you faithful Catholics, the Father said to me, Renew your consecration to the holy hearts of Jesus and Mary. This is critical. Because you are being made aware, you already know that you are blessed. Why do you believe God picked you to be here? Because you're on a mission. When you go out, you will feel something on your shoulder when you come home. What exactly is it? The burden of Jesus, which is the Lord's mission. If he is forewarning you of what is to come, it is because individuals will return from their mystical experience of meeting God, seeking assistance and unsure of what to do. Some people will be terrified. Others will be taken aback. You have been chosen for this time to assist in guiding these people into the Catholic Church, so that they might hear the good news of Jesus. You can be either youthful or elderly. Don't be concerned if you have leg or back problems. There are many backs in heaven, and the Lord can heal you better than any doctor. Some of you will give brief catechetical education to people, who are unfamiliar with the fundamentals of the Catholic faith. So we are all asked to be ready, ready to assist our brothers and sisters when this six and a half week time arrives, ready to lead them to the church, where they will find peace of mind and happiness with the Lord. We are all called to be disciples of Christ. 
You must talk, you must stand, you must advise. Yes. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil, may God rebuke him we humbly pray, and to thou O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God. Thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who wandered through the world for the ruin of souls, Amen. O glorious Prince, Saint Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of souls, when creature of rebel spirits, servant in the house of the Divine King and our admirable conductor. You who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil, who turn to you with confidence and enable us by your gracious protection, to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to their protection, implored thy help, or sought the intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for watching and may God pour down an abundance of graces and blessings upon all of us. Till next time stay blessed and keep praying.